I'm sorry, I'm ranting too much, and we got to go on a break. But the next segment is yours. The next segment is yours, Jeremy, when we get back. Absolutely. Perfect. Anti-war radio, y'all. Sorry to everyone for that, but I'm right. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. All right, y'all, welcome back to the show. It's Anti War Radio. I'm talking with, sort of at and to uh, Jeremy Veron. He's from witnessagainsttorture.com, and I was ranting before the break that the Democrats would be winning if they had any spine, if they would do the right thing for a minute. But as you were saying before, I think, Jeremy, they're not in it to do the right thing. They're in it to win it. They're in it to claim, I mean, hell, Obama's even claimed the power to murder you and me, which is more than George Bush ever claimed. There's yeah, I mean, I want to backtrack a bit to what you described as your rant. It was edgy, but actually pretty eloquent. And I think it captures something important. Like a big part of the support for Obama was discussed with George Bush. I mean, that was a lot of the sort of wind in his sail, the sense that the country had been disgraced and degraded, fundamental principles, savage. We had near tyrannical government, and there was this desperate desire to end uh, you know, the tyranny of sort of lawless rogues who had hijacked the nation's highest office. And then there was also the promise of a transcendent postpartisan president who could represent all America, look forward, not, you know, look backward and take us over some, you know, glorious horizon of new possibilities for political consensus. And I think Obama became so captivated by the mythology of that second aspect of his campaign that he forgot the first aspect and then thought that moving forward meant turning away from the past and doing nothing to correct the serious abuses of the rule of law, of the Constitution, of American values. The postpartisanship didn't work because the right has sort of savagely Um, attacked him. He's been a very, very modest, if in ways meaningful, reformer. And then he's basically left untouched, I think, the worst aspects of the Bush legacy, which is the legacy of torture and an absence of accountability and the trashing of the Constitution. And then I feel like part of a forgotten constituency, uh, my organization has had a meeting with the Justice Department, and then they listened to us with a kind of professed sympathy. We're trying to negotiate a follow-up meeting with folks who actually set policy. So far, we've gotten nowhere, and I feel like they feel that this constituency I'm a part of is ultimately expendable, that a lot of us are going to vote for the guy next time anyhow, or we're so statistically insignificant that it doesn't necessarily matter. And I think the bigger question is then has he betrayed his party or has he betrayed certain voters is has he betrayed, you know, the Constitution and has he pre- betrayed human rights and principles of equality and dignity and respect for the sanctity of the, the human body. So there's a kind of political story that looks very messy in ways that you captured. And then there's a deeper story where sort of fundamental things about this society uh, are um, at stake. And then I don't think he comprehends um, the stakes of his own uh, of his own conduct. And, and I think history, you know, will sort of judge harshly the, the path that he's given to um, his predecessor. Well, and the denial of justice to the tortured. And I mean, that's what this is really about is the victims of Bush's crimes, of which there were many and who were all real human beings and it matters but you know i wanted to kind of bring up the fact that this guy's chief of staff is rom emanuel and there's a great i think couple of articles maybe even three articles by john v walsh at counterpunch.org about how in 06 rom emanuel in the house engineered for the democratic party to work against any anti-war Democrats in the primaries and for Tammy Duckworth and all the pro-war Democrats. And in every single case, Jeremy, the pro-war Democrat 
who won the primary lost the general. And in every case where the anti-war Democrat won the primary, they won the general. And Rahm Emanuel, with his evil warmongering for a foreign power strategy, cost the Democrats numerous seats in that election. They somehow took the House and Senate anyway. But it just goes to show this is not about good politics. Like you said, betraying the Democratic Party and the interests of the party itself. It's not about that. It's about the interests of the state, the interests of the executive branch, the interests of the Pentagon, and the interests, of course, in Rahm Emanuel, IDF veterans case, the interests of whatever Benjamin Netanyahu and the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee want. And so if that means turning the government back over to the Republicans, fine. At least we know we can count on them to kill everybody. Well, uh, you know, I'm scared of the midterms, and I'm scared for 2012, and people in the left are on, you know, a horrible bind where the Obama administration has, you know, needless to say, powerfully disappointed um, expectations and then barely seems worthy of our support any longer. But then the alternative is, um, you know, truly terrifying. And then clearly there needs to be a new phase of progressive mobilization. I mean, so much progressive energy got wrapped up in the campaign. And I think for good reason, the rhetoric sounded wonderful. He's a messianic figure. He's an African-American. And I wanted to support him for that, you know, reason alone. And there was a lot of good reasons why we placed uh, our faith in the promise of, of, of real change. And then now, um, you know, we have to take stock of our disappointment and think about a next move. And then we've seen in, you know, 18 months, the Tea Party movement shift the entire spectrum of the Republican Party to the right. And it would be interesting to imagine if uh, something like that could happen on the left. And then I'm very careful not to be consumed by a sense of anger and despair. And then the people who I want to help are least well served by my anger and despair and dejection. They need my love, energy, optimism, and commitment. This anti-torture work has been very, very frustrating, but, you know, we know we're morally right. And then people all over the world thank us for continuing to sort of carry the, the torch of justice on, on these issues uh, and not going away and not getting, uh, you know, defeated. So, I, you know, I think we need to take stock of our frustrations and at the same time ask ourselves what's the most constructive use that we can, you know, make of it. Uh, and then sort of turning viciously against Obama in an emotional and in a personal way, even then I don't think that makes much sense because the problems are systemic. And I think the systemic requirements of American power as it projects itself Globally, is a certain kind of military regime, and along with it, a certain kind of, you know, detention apparatus. And then ultimately, the problem is a national security state connected to, uh, in many ways, an imperial state. And undoing those deep structures, that's the ultimate prize. Politicians, administrations come and go. They mean a little bit left. They mean a little bit right. But, you know, there is a bigger picture. Well, uh, it seems to me, Jeremy, like you, well, you sound anyway, like you see it very clearly. You've identified the most important issues, and, uh, you know, in particular, the torture issue, I think, is the very most important of the most important issues. I guess aggressive war underlies it all, as you just said. But anyway, uh, you're on the right side, and uh, a lot of people value your work, and I really do appreciate your time on the show today. I appreciate talking to you. Uh, it's been a lot better than a lot of other interviews I've done because it's really engaged. It's a real conversation, and there's a real exchange of ideas. So keep up your good work, okay? Great. Thank you very much, everybody. Yes. That is Jeremy Veron from Witness Against, no, WitnessTorture.org. That's the website for Witness Against Torture.